okay so today we will solve get 2022 question this is a question from functional analysis what it is saying so this is a question number 43 given that x y and z are Banach spaces and t is a linear map from x to y and s is a linear map from y to z and what else is given that s is bounded and injective also given and in addition if s composite which is will be mapped from x to z is bounded is given then which of the following statement is true you have to check four options are given that t is surjective bounded or not bounded you have to check which one is correct okay we will solve this one so so in order to solve this this is the nptl reference this you can check for references okay so let's try to solve this question so it gave given t from x to y is linear uh, before that all are given that Banach spaces x y z are Banach spaces means complete non-linear spaces and what is given t from x to y is linear s from y to z is linear bounded and injective and in addition also given so these are given s composed t which is a map from x to z so this is linear and bounded right so these are given so so using all these three we will prove that t must be bounded so claim so we will prove this one that t will be bounded t is bounded okay and for linear operator bounded what is so i is so we have to show that norm tx is less than c times norm x for all x in x capital x right so this is mean the boundedness for a linear operator and also this will imply that t is also continuous so for linear operator continuous and boundedness are the same thing so how we will prove this that t is bounded so for this we will use one result so bound there are different different techniques to showing that an operator is bounded so here one technique is we will show that closed graph theorem we will use this one so let me write the result theorem this is called closed graph theorem so let t is a linear operator from x to suppose y be linear then the following are of then the following are equivalent first of all t is bounded second one the graph of t is closed means what is graph of t this is x comma tx such that x belongs to x 
सो दिस इज अ सबसेट ऑफ एक्स कॉम क्रॉस वाई राइट द ग्राफ ऑफ ग्राफ ऑफ टी इज क्लोज इन एक्स क्रॉस वाई राइट एंड थर्ड सो एंड ऑल्सो मीन्स टी इज क्लोज सो हॉन एवर दॉन एवर वी से द टी इज क्लोज मीन्स द ग्राफ ऑफ टी इज क्लोज सो दिस इज सेम एज सेइंग द टी इज क्लोज एंड थ्री सो इट इज सेइंग दैट इफ x n tends to x and t x n tends to y so this is in x in y and this is in y right then t of x equals to y means if x n converges to y then t of x n must converge to t of x right so these three are equivalent so and x y are banach spaces let me write it here so here x y are banach spaces so in banach spaces t is bounded is same as t is closed mean the graph of t is closed and if x n converges to x in x and t x n converges to y in y then t of x equals to y okay so we'll use this theorem to prove that t is bounded basically we'll show that using this we will show that t is bounded right so we'll use the this theorem okay so here what is given so in order to show t is bounded we need to show so here in order to show t is bounded we need to show we need to prove if xn is a sequence in x such that xn tends to x in x and t x n converges to y then so so assume this one then t of x equals to y so right so this we have to prove then t will be closed mm, so then t will be bounded we are done so assume this one assume xn converges to x in x and txn converges to y to prove t of x equals to y now what is given it is given that s composed t is a linear and bounded right so now given that s 
S compose T is bounded. So here bounded means continuous, right? As Xn and this S compose T is a map from X to Z. As Xn converges to X in X, so by the continuity S compose T of Xn converges to S compose T of X. Right. So this is just the, the continuity means here S compose T is bounded. So it is continuous. So S compose T of Xn will converge to S compose T of X. And again what is given? That S is also bounded means S is also continuous. So we will again now use this one. Right. So T Xn converges to Y. So this is also given S is bounded as Txn converges to Y in Y and S is a map from Y to Z so S of T of Xn converges to S of Y right and these are in Z right in Z in Z now you know that uh, as we have we know S compose T of Xn is same as S of T of Xn right So, because these are the left hand side, both are the same and both converges to here, this converges to here and this converges to here. So, by the uniqueness of the limit, so by uniqueness of the limit, what we will get? That S compose T of X should be equal to S of Y right because this converges to here and this converges to here so the limit will must be same so this we will got now what is also given what is also extra given that S is injective now we will use this fact that S is injective so as S is injective So therefore, if it is injective then T of X equals to Y, right? Because uh, injective means if uh, suppose some property T is injective means T of X equals to T of Y implies X equals to Y. So T X equals to T Y. So you have got this. So this is we have to, this we need to prove, right? This is our claim. So we got T X equals to Y. So therefore by closed graph theorem, so which implies T is closed, which implies T is bounded by closed graph theorem. So we have shown that T is bounded, right? So therefore what we have got here, the T is bounded but not continuous. But for linear operator continuous and bounded are the same. So this is not. So T is bounded. If T is bounded, so T is not unbounded. So only remain to check the option A. So let's check option A. So it is saying that T is surjective. Right. So this is bounded implies that T is continuous. because these are linear over so now we have to check that t is surjective or not so we will show that t may not be surjective if this condition is given so means there is linear map which is not surjective but it still satisfy this condition so we will give an example of, of that
now we'll show that so now we will show t may not be surjective right so let's so we will give an example so let's take so define this t from so l to n so this is a square summable sequence from l to n so these are basically hilbert spaces so basic banach spaces so what where how we will map so this has a basis these are sauder basis i am mapping en to 1 by n en right and now i am extending this to linearly to all x so means how i am extending for x in l to n this you can write because these are ens are orthonormal basis one can write x equals to x inner product en and en right so now we will extend it linearly so t of x will be summation over n x inner product en t en and what is t en so this is n summation x inner product en this is 1 by n en right so let me write it here 1 by n en so basically so this so this is our definition of t now check note that t is bounded so what is t of x so you have to calculate the l2 norm of this right so you are calculating the l2 norm of this so using the orthogonality what we will got so en sir orthonormal basis so basically what we will got 1 by n square x en so why this is true as en sir orthonormal right now so what we will next do so use the cauchy swatch in the numerator so this if you use the cauchy swatch so what you will got so this you will got basically norm of x square and norm en square by cauchy swatch And this is saying that this inner product is less than this one so now ens are all have the orthonormal so these are norm one so this is basically less than n 1 by n square let me write it here because x is n independent so this is norm x square and ens are norm one right so and this is summable on by n square so it will be c times norm x square so which implies that t is bounded right now we will show that t is injective Mm, so for injective you have to show that t of x equals this so these are linear operator if t x equals to 0 you have to show that kernel is the only the zero zero vector is there right so if t of x equals to 0 which implies summation 1 by n x en en is 0 so this is over all n and this is 0 means what so this is 0 vector which implies so x en should be 0 for all n and this is the ens are orthonormal basis so x is 
orthonormal to all the bases orthonormal bases right so which implies x should be the zero vector so this is the one result that if x is orthonormal to all the basis elements then x must be zero so x is zero so cardinal of t is only the zero vector so which implies so t is injective So you have got that t is bounded, t is injective, and obviously t is linear, but t is not surjective. Claim t is not surjective. T is not surjective. This you can also so other way, but I am giving an one that. there exists a vector in the l2 which is not in the domain so let's take let take y to be this vector summation over n 1 by n en so note that this is in l2 if you take the l2 norm means some take the square sum angle then this will be finite now we will show why does not belongs to range of t it means so this implies that t is not surjective right so if if so then there exist x belongs to l to n such that t of x equals to y or so this means 1 by n x n n should be summation 1 by n n right so the so this is the meaning of this so now so these are both side are same en sir the so orthonormal basis the corresponding coefficient should be same so which implies so 1 by n so therefore because t is injective i mean so en sir orthonormal basis So if you subtract, what you will get that x in our product e n is one for all n, right? But this can't be. This is not possible, as x is in L two, which implies x. What what is x? Right, x we have written this x in our product e n, e n. so what is l2 norm of x so if you write down l2 norm because of the orthogonality you will get this and which is finite right? because x is a single vector so as the series is finite which implies x en should be goes to zero right but x but what do we have got but as we get x en is one for all n so this is a contradiction so this is a contradiction so what contradiction to what so we have assume that t is surjective right so which implies t is not surjective so which implies therefore t is not surjective means there does not exist any x such that t of x equals to y so t is not surjective 
now so we have got the t is not surjective now we have to what else remains we have to check so take s equals to t and t is the this linear vector this t this t we are taking so what are the assumptions we have to check that t is a linear s is a linear bounded injective then s composed t is bounded so you have, uh, so that this t is not if it is not surjective it is it can still satisfies all the assumptions right so let's check so you have taken s and t both to be the t t as the above example then t is linear bounded injective and s compose t what is s compose t so this is actually t square so how it will be t square it will be mapped from again l2 of n to l2 of n So it will be basically map e n to one by n square e n. Again, as we have checked that t is bounded, again one can check similar to t that. t square is bounded so you have shown that for s s is a linear t is linear bounded injective and s composed t which is t square is again bounded but s which is t is not surjective or t is not surjective sorry t is not surjective So if t is not surjective, it still the, all the things are satisfied. So therefore, it is not necessary that t has to be surjective. So therefore, which options we have got? That t is surjective, it is not necessarily true. This may not always be true. T is bounded but not continuous. This is not true because bounded and continuity are the same for linear operator. T is bounded. This is true because we have got t is bounded. T is not bounded. This is also false. so option c is the correct option okay